So let us see the patch independent method in detail. Now patch independent method as the name independent suggests it means that the surface mesh that is created does not depend on the surface patches. This method uses the octree based algorithm which we will discuss later. It is also a robust method. It has some disadvantages but right now we will discuss mostly the advantages associated with this particular method. By using this method we can walk over thin gaps and small holes. Which means if the feature size or hole size is greater than the mesh size defined then those features will not be considered while meshing. Also surface boundary curves are not needed. We can only keep those curves which define geometry and other curves can be deleted which removes the constraint on mesh resulting in better quality. Mesh can be created using dirty geometries also. We will see the elaborated explanation of this. Let's say the gap size is 0.1 and the mesh size is 0.5. We have a thin gap that is this. There are two edges here as you can see in the zoom image. Now this is the mesh created by this particular patch independent algorithm. So as you see this gap is basically neglected which was there. Now one by one we will discuss the options that are available within the patch independent method. First is the respect line elements option. In this already existing line elements will be considered while meshing even if curves are not present. If this is deactivated previous mesh is deleted and new mesh is created from scratch. This is useful in making conformal surface mesh or joining surface meshes. This particular option that is respect line elements will be activated when we tick in this particular option. As you can see the existing line elements is respected and the mesh is conformal with that particular line element. That is it considers the nodes on those, that particular line element. Now we will see an example of patch independent applied on different surfaces. As you can see patch independent method with the respect line element activated it is showing this particular change in the mesh type. This was the earlier, this is the after patch independent method. Now let us discuss the next method which is called shrink wrap. Now as the name suggests this particular method uses wrapping technique which means it will not capture the exact geometry features. It would approximate overlapping mesh which is called a shrink wrap. It knows detailed features like gaps, holes etc. It is used for mostly solid modeling that is when we have to consider conduction or heat transfer between solid. It is not recommended for thin solids as well as for detailed modeling of fluids. A number of different options are available to control the mesh. First is the number of smoothening iterations. It defines the number of smoothening iterations performed to improve the mesh. So as you can see this is particular type of uh, shrink wrap mesh. This is where we activate the shrink wrap mesh and give it setting by going into mesh panel. We select the method as shrink wrap and then give the number of smooth iterations. Now what does the number of smoothening iterations does is that it will carry out number of repetitive operations or iterations trying to smoothen the surface mesh and trying to fit it or overlap it with the geometry that is considered. The second option is surface projection factor. It controls the tightness of the shrink wrap on the geometry. Value 0 indicates the shrink wrap is free from geometry. Value 1 indicates the shrink wrap must follow the geometry. So a number of smoothening iterations will define how, how smooth or how cartesian or how continuous the mesh is. The surface projection factor will define how overlapping or how much uh, attached the mesh is to the particular geometry. Let us observe how shrink wrap works. This is the geometry that we are going to mesh and this is the shrink wrap mesh which is created around it. As you can see the mesh has just wrapped a kind of a wrapper around the geometry and no detailed features are captured but this is Good for uh, solid modeling and when we have to approximately model uh, the flow around uh, bluff bodies etc. Let us see in detail the options that are available in the shrink wrap mesh. Cartesian mesh is created around the geometry. Cube faces are partially projected onto the geometry. Then the smoothening operation is performed on mesh that is created and after that the shrink wrap options are activated that is number of smooth iterations and surface projection factors. These control the projection and smoothening of the surface. So let us see uh, this is our geometry. Then the first step will give you a Cartesian mesh. 
Then the final shrink wrap mesh after smoothening. If we see the smoothening factor, this is how it works. This is the geometry. We have a surface smoothening factor of 0. If we make it 0.5, it will try to capture the geometry. If we make it 1, it will try to capture the geometry much better. So you can see the difference between 0, 0.5 and 1. In this particular slide, we will see what are the options to control the mesh size. There are various options which are on the global side, on the part mesh side, on the local surface mesh size as well as the local curve mesh size. So four different options are available at four different geometry levels. One on the global level, one on the part level, one on a surface mesh level and the other one on a local curve mesh level. When we say global mesh size, it controls the mesh size globally. It sets the minimum and maximum limit for mesh size throughout the domain. That is what will be the highest mesh size and what will be the lowest mesh size allowed in the entire domain globally. Now it may happen that the local mesh size that we define on surface or part or curve may become more than the maximum limit or may become less than the minimum limit of the global mesh size. In that case, the global mesh size will be used and the local sizes will be discarded. The other level at which we can define mesh size is at part level. This opens a dialog box where one can specify the mesh size on individual parts. If these mesh sizes on parts are not given, then the global mesh sizes will be used. It is a quick method to specify overall mesh size on each component. That is, we can control the mesh around each component, the mesh size around each component. Next option is local surface mesh size. This is similar to part mesh size, but it belongs to surfaces. That is, we can specify the mesh size on individual surfaces. It is very useful when we require local refinement, refinement in some areas such as valve openings and other gaps, etc. Also, curve mesh sizes are available where we can specify the mesh parameters for curves. That is, we can specify the number of nodes, bunching, etc. It is used to control mesh size and distribution on surface boundaries by giving the number of nodes on the curves. Now let us discuss the global mesh size parameters in detail. This will affect the surfaces, volumes and prism elements globally. We will first discuss the scale factor. The scale factor is an input which multiplies all the mesh size by a specified factor. This is used globally to refine or coarsen the mesh. And next input or parameter is maximum element. This controls the maximum element size in mesh. Any mesh element will never exceed this particular size. That is, this is the maximum allowable mesh size in the entire domain. It is usually a practice that we give it in terms of hours of 2. If we set this at 0, it means that auto sizing will be implemented. It does not mean the maximum element size is 0. The next input is curvature proximity based refinement. The next input is curvature proximity based refinement. When this particular option is enabled, it allows the user to refine the mesh without giving too many parameters. There is no need to specify smaller mesh sizes where curvature is high. This option takes care of it automatically. It can also refine the mesh based on proximity such as in small gaps. This is when we enable it and this is the type of mesh that we get after enabling this particular option. In this, the first parameter is minimum size. If minimum size is not defined, then the mesh count can increase drastically as there is no limit for refinement that it will go on refining the mesh as much as possible. Minimum size imposes that particular limit this minimum size will be multiplied by global scaling factor. Next parameter within the curve proximity based refinement is elements in gaps. It is applicable only in case of octree or patch independent meshing. It controls the mesh size such that specified minimum number of elements are created in gap. As you can see in this particular example, the effect of elements in gap can be observed. This is the gap. We enable it. 
without activating that option this is the mesh that we are getting now we enable that option we give the minimum size limit as 0.1 and the elements in gap as 2 and the refinement as 10 and this is the mesh that we get after activating this particular option and giving all the parameters related to it. So this is a better way to control the meshing within a gap as uh, we can see here without activating it this is a very bad mesh that we are getting. Next option within the global mesh size is refinement. It acts in similar way to minimum size. This limits the mesh refinement on curves. Example, as you can see in the image, this is the original curve. We extend the curve by 360 degrees. Depending on the refinement, level spacing is calculated. Same spacing is used to plot mesh on original curve. When the refinement is specified as 10, the given curve is hypothetically extended to 360 degrees. Now as shown in the example, when the refinement is specified as 10, then this particular original curve is hypothetically extended to 360 degrees. Mesh size is then selected in such a way that specified number of elements are created on this extended curve. This particular size is then applied to original curve. So we will get three particular three elements in the original curve. So this is how this particular refinement option works. Next option within the global mesh size is ignore wall thickness. Walls usually have two parallel surfaces in close proximity to each other. Curvature proximity based refinement will produce very fine mesh in this region which is not necessary in all cases. Now if this ignore wall thickness option is enabled it will restrict the refinement of mesh in these areas. Thus it will reduce the mesh count. Effect of this option can be seen in this particular figure. This above figure is without activating this option, it has created a lot of mesh in the gap whereas when we click on ignore wall thickness, it has ignored the wall thickness and thus it has reduced the mesh count. 